what you think. What kind of spice you wanna be? Happy Monday. I am Nicole Everett, the host of Conversations with Nicole, a talk show based here in Tallahassee, Florida, focused on connecting the community through conversations. Today is Monday, June 22nd, 2020, and it's what I call Man Up Monday. This is an opportunity for us to engage in conversation So this is an interactive live, and I ask that you please put your comments and questions in the comment box, and we will get to them. Um, But before we get started, if you will, because I cannot see you, put in the city and state that you are viewing from. Put in the city and state that you're viewing from so I can give you a shout out. Tell me where where you're watching us from. Um, While you're doing that, uh, just want to let you know that I have a dynamic speaker tonight. He is a poet. He is a father. He is a son. He is a a friend um, and just a a dynamic person. Um, We are on this Man of Monday going to be tackling the difference between father and daddy and seeking positive men to follow. So hopefully you all had a delightful Father's Day. Um, this is I'm calling this our post-Father's Day chat, our post-Father's Day chat. So without further ado, help me welcome my brother, my friend, Mr. Derek, Dr. Look, Dr. Derek Standifer. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. Uh, I was so excited when I got the call from Mr. Cole Everett to be on Man on Mondays. I'm a big fan of your work. I think you're one of the hardest persons I know, and this is truly an honor to be on your show tonight. Thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate the blessings. Uh, You honor me with your words. You really do. So Derek and I met some years ago, I think at a holiday party at um, Cabo City Country Club, actually. Yeah, he don't even remember that, but I do. Yeah, but uh, I've also interacted with him through Black on Black Rhyme, Back Talk. Talk back. Okay, so uh, he is a, a a a great poet and writer and just all around good guy. Um, we have worked on a couple of projects together and. You know, he's working on his PhD currently. Anyway, I'm not supposed to be introducing you. You're supposed to be introducing yourself. You might have been, you might have been I know, right? No, I'm not. Cut. No. Tell tell the folks who may not know you, where you're from, who you are, what you do. My name is Derek Standifer, a.k.a. Ayana's daddy, a.k.a. Derek Junior's papa, a.k.a. my parents' son. And uh, I'm a, I was a, I was Born in Atlanta, but I'm originally from my mama and my daddy. Uh, Atlanta is home, um, but I think Tallahassee is the place most near and dearest to my heart. Uh, I always say that because Tallahassee, it grew me up and it made me a man. So I call it Tallahassee home right now. Yep, yep, yep. All right, all right. And what are you currently working on? Uh, what am I not working on? Oh, my God. So currently, uh, I'm in the PhD program for educational leadership. Uh, I decided to embark on this journey. I was teaching for two years. And I wanted to make a bigger impact in the lives of my students. I noticed that a lot of students who look like me, they have low confidence. Um, I came up with this slogan as a teacher. Um, I am African, African to build some motivation up into my melanated students. Okay. And I stand, have- stand up, stand up and come a little closer so the folks can see. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Not oh, this, African, yeah, this is not African. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I got tired of my black students telling me what they can't do, so... Uh, you know, the poet in me came up with this slogan, I am African, not African. 
and uh, we use it as a as a, a a chance to motivate us to get our work done and to accomplish the things that we thought that we thought weren't possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome, awesome. So your author second book came out this year, last year. Oh man, it's I think it's about it's barely a month old. Um, okay. But I am the new author of a book called Life is Like a Rubik's Shoe. This is my baby. This is my baby right here. Oh my God. Thank you for the blessing. Mine came in the mail today. So I'm excited. Oh man, perfect time. <laughs> yes. So, um, Life is Like a Rubik's Shoe. Oh man. It took about four years to, to compose this book, to put it together. Uh, I think I started on this project in 2016. I had uh, I did a, 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 um, um, a Toastmaster speech. They made us write a motivational speech, and I wrote about um, the five steps of solving life. And I juxtaposed it to solving a Rubik's cube. So there are five steps of solving life. Mm -hmm. Five steps of solving the Rubik's cube. Uh, the first step is to believe. You know, if he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Uh, the mm -hmm. second step is to solve your cross. Now, solving your cross is identifying your reasons and your why that you must make your goals and your dreams and, and your aspirations become true. Uh, step number three is filling in your corners. Now, that's surrounding yourself with positive people and immersing yourself in a positive environment. You know, Zig Ziglar, he says that you are what you are and you are where you are because of what you allow to go into your mind. Mm. And if you want to change. Oh, there it froze. There it froze. OK, so we're going to have him pop off and pop back on. But while he's doing that, I am going to, while he's doing that, we're going to um, welcome some of the folks that are on the live. All right. So, hey, Janae, I see you. She said, Tally, we love CWN. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, man of Mondays. We got Vicki Washington. Thank you so much for being on here. Um, Tiffany Packer. Yay, Mr. Standifer, she said, thank you for being on here. And then Alonza Morris, he said, you were almost through the entire introduction, Nicole. I know, Alonza, I got too excited, but thank you. I appreciate you being on here as well. All right, so Derek is, is getting it back together, but while he's doing that, um, we, again, our topic tonight is the difference between father and and daddy father and daddy um and i know he I, I have some idea of where he's gonna go with this but um what do y'all think what do you think the difference is between a father and a daddy what do y'all think the difference is between a father what do you think a father is versus a daddy what do you think a father is versus a daddy put it in the comments for me a father versus the daddy versus a daddy is there a difference and if so what is it what is it? What is it? So I think a father really speaks to biological. Just the fact that you are a man that gave your seed that helped to create this human being, right? So biological, biological. Daddy, I think, is a, a bit more intimate, a bit more, um, a bit more close knit. Um, he is somebody that you can look to um, that's going to be there through thick and thin. That's going to, um, that's going to, you know, be that provider. And not that a father can't, but it's just something more intimate about a daddy. Something more intimate about a daddy. All right. I think Derek is back on. I'm going I'm to read y'all's comments in just a minute. Actually, hold on. Let me go ahead and read these. I see you, Natasha. Thank you, my mango. Good to see you. Uh, Roger Walker, you say, hey, Nicole, I'm listening while getting my run on. Love it. Love it. Love it. I appreciate that. All right. Derek, there we go. Okay, he's back on. All right, go ahead. Tell us, finish telling us about the Rubik's Cube, and then I already kind of jump started on our topic. But go okay, ahead. cool. Go ahead what, and finish. What, what I, I'm sorry, we have some technical difficulties. What, what did I leave off on? What step did you uh, uh, The cross. Okay, so step two. 
Um, step one, after you believe in yourself, step two is uh, solving your cross. And solving your cross means to identify your reasons and your whys that you must make your dreams and your goals and your, uh, and your aspirations become true. Step three is filling in your corners. And that means to surround yourself with positive people and immerse yourself in a positive environment. Mm -hmm. There's a quote that I like by Zig Ziglar. He says that you are what you are and you are where you are because of what you allow to go into your mind. And if you want to change what you are, and if you want to change where you are, you must change what you allow to go into your mind. Step four is to take it to the next level. It means to continue to grow, to continue to get better, always become a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Step five is to see the bigger picture and keep your commitment to your commitments. And step six is don't take the stickers off the Rubik's cube. A lot of times people try to find shortcuts in life, but uh, mm -hmm. if you implement the five steps that I just outlined, and you can learn how to solve the Rubik's cube inside of you. Awesome. 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 Well, thank you for sharing those valuable steps. We'll uh, mention that again towards the end, because I definitely want folks to take advantage of that uh, great information. But let's go ahead and dive in, because I already got started. Oh, look, at you got Gian Jones on here. Hey, y'all, she says, and she... She is being your scribe tonight, there it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That's my accountability partner right there. We all each other accountable. We've been pushing each other to keep it pushing. Yes, I love it. I love it. So we're talking about the difference between father and daddy. I asked the viewers to give us their definitions. Tell, tell me what they think. And Camille said sacrifice. Mm. Uh, Virtue said a daddy is present. He is a nurturer and instructor, and he speaks destiny into his children. Can you see that? Daddy is present. He is a nurturer and instructor, and he speaks destiny into his children. Alonza said one's biological DNA, and there is no need for blood relation. Hmm. That's pretty good. Um Virtue said, a father can be many things. The seeds you come from, a person who steps in as a provider. Uh, all right. So, yeah, the, those are the father father and daddy comments. So, let's hear from Dr. Standifer. So, uh, when you asked me to speak on this topic, I, was, I, I always speak on the difference between a father and a daddy. Um, mm -hmm. Because, simply put, fathers... They make the child and daddies raise the child. Um, mm. That's that's a, is a simple definition. And um, I know you've heard me mention um, my dad, Coach Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, I refer to him as Coach Hill. Is not my biological dad. Uh, it was no relation with my mother. But in the truest sense of the word, he was my daddy. He raised me. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that a father teaches a son, he taught me how to drive, he taught me how to change the oil, how to change the tire, uh, how to raise a family. Um, and, uh, you know, I just uh, imagine a, uh, a man coming into a, a boy's life at 12 years old and saying, I'm your daddy, and mm -hmm. I got to make up a lost time. And that's what Coach Hill did for me. Um, and unfortunately, he passed last April from cancer. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But every day I honor his legacy. I honor his legacy by being the daddy that I am to my children and my seed because yes. I saw him in his daughter's life. And um, it was one of those daddies that you see on TV. All his children were always with him. He was doing hair. He was taking them to the basketball games. It was it was phenomenal to see how invested he was into his into his children's life, and I honor him by I, I share a lot of me teaching my kids and stuff. But I teach them. I, I take them everywhere with me. They're always with me. Um, and it's just a beautiful blessing, you know. And daddies, daddies, they enjoy being in their child's life. They enjoy it. It's not a burden. It's not a task. Yeah. I love seeing Ayana and Derek grow and become and be. I want them to, um, you know, I want them to take the baton from me and advance their status in life. I don't want them to have to start over from zero like like many, you know, like many people do. Um, I was talking to someone and, you know, it's one of the sad things is that we're in 2020 and we're staying, we're still seeing like people like the first person in that family to graduate from high school or the first person in that family to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. And now daddies should make it a responsibility to have their children building on top of building blocks mm -hmm. you know we set a foundation for them to build upon and not start over every generation I'm, you know i'm tired of our people having to start over every generation so mm -hmm. yeah. so um thank you for sharing that you know 
I did a couple of shows on fatherlessness and father hunger. And both of those, which are, are um, you know, fatherlessness and father hunger, have a profound impact on boys and girls. And it was through those episodes that I discovered how important fathers are to the lives of their children. And, you know, it's not just boys, it's not just girls, it's both. It's very important for fathers to be in the lives of their children, to acknowledge them, to recognize them, to accept them. Um, and there's so many issues when they aren't present in their children's lives. And it's not the presence in, in their children's lives is not just physically, but if they're emotionally and spiritually unavailable, their their leaves avoid in the lives of those those children. So, you know, they can, yeah, so to hear you talk about a daddy raising the child and not necessarily being biological is huge. You know, I, I think sometimes some men may be um, void of recognizing that even though they have fathered children, but not recognize the, the value and the importance of raising their children and being a daddy to their children. Um, you know, I, I, I because, again, because of those episodes and some of the conversations that I've had over the years, I almost can immediately, you know, recognize when somebody is, um, is missing a father or a father figure in their lives or doesn't have a daddy in their lives, right? Because maybe they have an issue with authority. Maybe they have issue with self-confidence. Um, so, you know, oftentimes it's, it's very evident. So, you know, I, I often say again that, that, that daddies have a very, very important job. I have talked to older men who have raised their children, children are grown and out of the house, but young people like high school age, college age are drawn to them because they don't have a daddy mm -hmm. and want to tell them what's going on with them, you know, and, and they've been like, I don't need to know all of that. <laughs> I mean, they don't say that to them, but you, you can sense, you can feel that, you know, it's a bit much. But I'm like, they, they're crying out. They, they they value you. They respect you. So they want, you know, what you have to offer as a father figure, as a daddy. I have a saying. Um, I have a saying that daddies make the difference. You know, the mothers are important. I believe that, you know, we got too many single parent households. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a big dilemma in our community is fatherless households. Daddies truly make the difference. Mm -hmm. And. You know, I, I think about myself and the people that I grew up with, and I never would have had a chance if it wasn't for coaches. I never would have had a chance. Um, wow. I was been a product of my environment. Um, you know, fortunately, unfortunately, and fortunately, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from high school, go to college, and I think about my. I got two brothers, and I think about them, and they're doing they're doing good, but Coach Hill was the the determining factor in our, on our different paths. Um, mm -hmm. For me, um, when when I, when when I could have been hanging in the streets, Coach he was you know it was taking me to football games and, mm -hmm. and taking me to family reunions, and I never my family never had a family reunion, and for for a man to show me what manhood is in the truest sense to immerse me in this environment of manhood of you know hey I'm paying the bills hey I'm raising my daughter doing hair. These, mm -hmm. are, these are new concepts. Like, you know, there's a saying, if a person don't know no better, then they can't do better. And sure. these are new concepts to me. And I just remember small things like wearing a, a tank top in public. Those are underclothes. You can't wear that in public. Those mm -hmm. are drawers. Mm -hmm. you, certain things that, that and, 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 if a, and if a young boy, I think young boys, they need uh, a man influence that they want to make proud. If you have a, somebody in your life that you want to make proud, you will move mountains for that person. You know, mm -hmm. it's a different kind of belief. It's a different kind of drive when you have somebody showing up in the, in the football stands and in the basketball stands to see you and cheer you on. And when they show up to your academic award setting, you want to make them proud. It's yes. a it's a different kind of drive. You want to, mm -hmm. I want to make you proud. 
and that that burning belief to make your daddy proud is a different kind of drive. Yes. yes. If you don't have that influence, you you find the influence. You know, you will find it. It may it might not be the right influence. You will find a negative influence to follow, and that's why so many of our young people are lost in the streets because they find the wrong influence to follow, and they don't have those positive male influences in their life. Absolutely. So Tyrone Brooks, who's here um, in Tallahassee, the artistic director of the Tallahassee Ballet, says structure is extremely important. Father figures are essential. Absolutely agree with that comment, Tyrone. So there you are a young father. You know, you have two small children. You're working. You're going to school. Um, what are some of the challenges that you face? Oh man, the challenges. Yeah. Um, so the challenges. I saw a meme and Terrence Barber, he shared this as well, but I saw a meme that said that if you take a man and put him in the same position as a woman, as a full time as a full time parent, then they will fold. And um I'm in a position where I'm a full time parent of a three year old, my daughter she just turned six. Um and the challenges are sometimes whew. What challenges aren't there? Like, making sure my, you know, my son, my son, he's a, he's a, he's a younger boy. Uh, just making sure the baby needs her met. But my daughter, she's becoming a girl now, so I have to make sure her hair is done. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure she washes herself properly. She cleans herself properly. Mm -hmm. She understands. Um, I have to learn how. I have to get positive women influence in her life to figure mm -hmm. out how she, how she, how I should be raising her, how I should be directing her, and. Um, um, guarding my children for protection, guarding them from the dangers, and keeping them protected and keeping them safe. Um, Ayana, my daughter, she's six. And I know a lot of parents, you know, they brag about their children being smart, but Ayana is truly a genius. Um, she is. She's six. She can add fractions and multiply. And it's just, it's amazing to see her in her element. So as, a, as her daddy, I have to advocate for her in school. She was in kindergarten. And um, the teacher was teaching her concept that she knew that, you know, she knew. And it's sad that our school systems are like this. But, you know, I'm up there every day. My baby can, she can count. She, mm -hmm. she know her little sound. She can read. She can add. Can, can we please put her in some, in some work that's challenging her? Because I don't care about her getting straight A's if she's not being challenged. I don't, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't impress me. If mm -hmm. she's not getting new knowledge, I, don't, I could care less about the grades. I want her to get new knowledge, new information to yeah. learn and be pushed. So, um, you know, I, th I think one of the one of the challenges is advocating for your children in their, in their academic settings. Uh, mm -hmm. Then, you know, take a time off from work to go to the schools, mm -hmm. um, take a time off of work from getting them to the doctor. When they get sick, I got to get them to the doctor, mm -hmm. uh, making sure this is a big challenge. Getting my kids to eat healthy. Mm -hmm. They want to eat junk food and snacks all day. Um, mm -hmm. And you have to find creative ways to get them their greens. For instance, Derek, Derek will sit there with spinach in his mouth and won't chew it. Mm -hmm. So um, I make smoothies. I just I just put spinach and kale in his smoothies, and he drinks. He, he, he drinks. That was going to be my suggestion. It was to try smoothies. And yeah, so you gotta, you know, you gotta. You gotta be they, creative. You gotta be creative, and mm -hmm. kids. When they get three, four, five, they start to think that they can outsmart you. So you gotta, you gotta navigate their ingenuity and let them know, you know, I invented this. <laughs> I invented this. <laughs> right, um, right, other right. Challenges, um, we got other a, we got a couple more comments. So let me, let me okay. um, acknowledge those. We got Rachel Roman on here. Greetings. Good to see you. All right. Tyrone says, so many are screaming for attention. Be mindful of their behavior. And he also said, children will rise to any occasion with positive reinforcement. So I think that that is truly important. This is Tyrone said, creative parenting. Awesome, Derek. Yes. So, you know, I, I think that... um. Like you're saying, you you gotta be creative. You gotta you know keep it fluid, um, and not stick to just one thing because they'll figure it out. And, and you know, and you you know, you like okay, that doesn't work anymore for them. All right, John Johnson is more here. He says, are you a single parent? So, yes, Johnny, he is a single parent. And um, 
one of the challenges as a uh, as a, a, a solo parent is uh, it's, it's an interesting time because of COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are shut down. Um, a lot of things are shut down, and with this pandemic going around, you know, you want you you want breaks, you need breaks, but you also you got to keep your kids you know safe and Thanks. you got to keep them guarded and you know it's you learn to take advantage of your of your uh, of your community of the family i like to call it and you got a lot of family. friends who are willing to reach out and, and yeah. assist but also you can't you really not doing this time you know this is a time where you just kind of keep them as away from many people as possible it's the interesting time that we're in right now this is mm -hmm. something that we never thought we'd see in our life right and now we have to learn how to navigate the new norm mm -hmm. absolutely so, absolutely so we got javon um Mobley on here. She's out of uh, Atlanta area. She's the the granddaughter of Sybil Mobley of the FAMU School of Business and Industry. So thank you for being on, Javon. Fellow ATLian. Yes, fellow ATLian. So Derek, you know, again, we're talking about the difference between father and daddy, and you said daddies make the difference. Daddy make daddies make the difference. Have you um, noticed? I guess. In, in terms of you know making the difference in the lives of your children, the difference in rearing them because you know no two children are the same. Maybe something that you do for Ayana might be different from what you do with Derek Jr. It is so crazy how two children can be in the same environment and be affected by different stimuli differently. Ayana, when Ayana's in trouble. I can simply say you're not being a good listener and that would hurt her feelings and mm -hmm. she's and that right there is enough to discipline her mm -hmm. Derek is a different his discipline methods change by the hour he is <laughs> all over the place it's just it's it's so fun and interesting to see mm -hmm. uh the differences in your children uh and then and also as ayana gets older she's uh certain certain timeouts you know timeouts don't work or mm -hmm or taking things away um she you know she, she has a I show, I, I show videos of me teaching her and stuff like that but she has an ipad and she loves her ipad and she loves doing science experiments and stuff like that mm -hmm. but if i curve those that's enough to straighten her up Derek, mm -hmm. on the other hand i don't think the the memory muscle sticks of time mouse or mm -hmm. taking things away yet. he's still a toddler so you, okay. you just, you just kind of like i'm still learning trial and error by, by dairy <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. so outside of you know what you may have picked up from um coach hill are there any parenting resources that maybe you have looked to to give you guidance or you know what what have you utilized if anything and maybe you haven't um well most of it is on the job training a lot of times okay. um, people say that they, they aren't ready to be parents but when you have a child certain things are just you just learn as you go um I'm, I'm a big believer in youtubing i will youtube something if i don't know it i will google okay. stuff if i don't know it um session section session two of this tonight's discussion is how, how to seek out positive male influence i have a, a, a network of people who i can come to for advice um okay. especially when it comes to, like teaching teaching is something that is easily to youtube and google but sometimes it's not that easy sometimes you need wisdom mm -hmm. for instance Derek Derek can read Derek can read three he can read but he's not getting potty trained you know that's the mm -hmm. number he's not get potty trained and you know usually about three boys are potty trained for the uh -huh. you know but um i was speaking to a, a teacher and she said uh he goes number one by himself no number one no issue but number two he still has issues mm -hmm. so i was told to put him in a bathtub and let him clean himself up and mm -hmm. they don't like they don't like the touch or the feelingness of it so that's where that wisdom comes in there that's something that you know you, you won't you wouldn't find that else on google so that's from reaching out to seasoned people who done done this thing called parenthood before right 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 yeah, 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 yeah. so um I'm, I had to learn, um, a lot of times people have so many different, so many different pieces of wisdom and the pieces of their advice that they want to give you to how to raise your kids. And sometimes they be right. Sometimes it, a lot of times it's wrong. Sometimes you don't want to hear from, you don't want to hear so many different opinions. Like people trying to tell you how to raise your kids. You know, yeah. people are very sensitive about their kids, mm -hmm. but me, I had to make myself available and open to all advice. You know, if somebody got some advice for me. 
I had to humble myself and take that advice because uh, now I'm, I'm learning that certain things work, certain things don't work, and uh, mm -hmm. people know people know a little bit more than this about me. Absolutely. All right, we got Jessica on from Cali. She said, "Hey y'all, I still have to get my shirt, Derek." <laughs> All right. So she said, I've always seen the father the way that you all are describing the daddy. Daddy just seems more absent to me since, hence, my baby daddy. I've always viewed the father as the present help in all times of need. Daddies are just what some like to call sperm don donors. There is definitely a great father and father figure. Keep up the great work, sir. Now that's Jessica, I appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. Yes, it's interesting that Jessica is she she feels like the daddy is more of the one that makes the child because of the term baby daddy. Um, it feels like the father is more the one that raises the child. So interesting perspective. So thank you for sharing that. Um, she said, "Yes, she is. She is so black girls rock and black girl magic all in one." Talking about Ayana, yes, yes, yes. So you've done a great job. And then uh, Tyrone said, "Old school, Derek is good, but you have to explore what works for you and your family." Absolutely. So I got a question before we transition to the next topic, and this speaks a little bit more to what's happening now in terms of the social unrest and um, systemic racism. I've been talking about that quite a bit on the live. You know, what's your concern as daddy, as father of these beautiful children with our society and their lives, you know, the, them being able to be sustained? Um, as they grow and mature, do you help to nurture them in, into, you know, uh, adults, you know, making it through through their their adolescent years into adulthood? What are your thoughts, if any, as it relates to that? Uh, from the first glance, um, we have to protect our mental well-being. Um, when you see stuff like George Floyd and Amari, these things they they age you they make you upset they make you depressed um and you know you want you have to protect your mental well-being i read an article that racism uh makes us grow older and it takes age off our, off our lives of our yeah. lives so you got to protect your mental well-being and um two you know one of the things that i want to practice that i'm practicing with my children is uh teaching them to have confidence in being african and being black you know when i grew up I just one of the things that I'm so glad that family taught me uh, that I, I, I did not have pride in being black or being African. It, it just wasn't a thing that I grew up knowing because every time you turn on the TV, you see white is good and black is bad. And if you watch mm -hmm. the news, you're indoctrinated with, with self-hate if you're black. And um, the one you have to protect yourself from those images, from that subtle, you know, that racism that that is embedded in the DNA of America. Uh, I noticed that certain times when we're in the presence of white people i used to, as a child i used to get in this inferior complex and i used to you know try to straighten up my english and and speak proper because i did not feel i did not feel that i was uh that i was good enough and then fam you told me that black people invented thinking and africa is the onset of the worlds of the world and everybody came to africa and learned and now i still those principles in my children and i want them to have the same confidence um, um, that other people have, you know, when you see Germans, Germans can be proud to be German all day and not scrutinized for it. You know, Asians are proud to be Asians all day and not scrutinized for it. But as soon as you're proud to be African or proud to be black, you seem like this militant type individual or mm -hmm. this anti-American when, you know, America is supposed to be accepting of all cultures and all societies and all blends of people. And you know, um, you know, when we started to look at the reality of things, that it was people who looked like you and I who built this country. America would not be the country that it is if it were not for the work, the blood, the sweat, and the tears of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And so I try to instill that into my children that, y'all, you know, the confidence that we need to have is the confidence that built America, that, that gave the world uh, the societies that we have. And we don't get the credit for it, but because it's hidden in history books. And, you know, we just kind of need to take back that that cultural um 
you know, the, our history didn't start with slavery. Our history mm -hmm. is well before slavery. And mm -hmm. we teach our children that, you know, that's one of the things. That's how to fight the fight in a different way in the classroom. I can't, I can't turn in the news and see another black person get shot. I just can't do it. It's so draining. It's so mm -hmm. draining. And so I try to fight the fight differently. Um, that's why I'm so dedicated to teaching them, teaching them and make sure they're good educationally and, and, and their mental well-being is good. And, you know, spreading, it's just spreading their confidence and being black. Okay, very good. All right, we got Lori Hunter on here. She said, I feel like father is more of the duties, protection, provision, and daddy is more regarding the relationship with the children. Um, she says she thinks that both aspects are important. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. All right, so we're going to transition into our second portion, which is seeking positive men to follow. So to the extent that there isn't a father, a father figure, a daddy um, present, who are some of the, the positive men that you can follow? One, um, we got access. We got access to all the information in the world. If there's not a, a, a in, an immediate man that you can look up to, you can find one on YouTube. Some of my greatest mentors are YouTube speakers that I have never met. Um, okay. and we, you know, we have to immerse ourselves in a positive environment by any means necessary, and especially, you know, we're in a time of social distance. They're teaching us how to use these social de these devices that we got. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, ironically, our smartphones kind of dumb us down a little bit. And we got to yeah. take back that power. Um, so one, you know, you can Google what a positive man is. You can find people like Eric Thomas and see how not only is he a positive business owner, but he's a positive father and positive family man. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, you can seek these individuals out. And if and in our in our immediate access, when everything kind of returns back to normal, but try to find men that you want to that you want to be like. Find men that you want to emulate. Um, I was a big as a young age, I always knew that, oh, he has a life that I kind of want to live. I want to embody. He has mm -hmm. this, he has this, he dresses like he's a, a, a successful individual. He drives a nice car, lives in a successful house. And I always knew in order to, in order to get to that lifestyle, I got to have that, that person in my life. And they're going to leave some breadcrumbs for you to pick up. You know, success leaves breadcrumbs. And you just got to pick up the breadcrumbs and, and follow their path to success. You know, it might not be a clear cut way, but when you start to pick up enough success, a uh, bread crumb from successful people, you will find a positive influence of man to model after. Um, so while you are teaching some bloody business, <laughs> that there, uh, y'all. Yep. All right, y'all, right. y'all, go back in there for me, please. I appreciate y'all. All right. So, so I, I got a question for the viewers. I, I want to know. Um, who are some of the positive men that you follow? Who are some of the positive men that you follow? And Derek, I know you, you I'm sure you have a list, but if y'all would in the comments, let us know who are some of the positive men that you follow. So we got, first, hold on, we got Gerald okay. on here. So we got to give a shout out to Gerald. Good evening, good evening. All right, go ahead. Okay, so uh, first off the top of my head, Keith Rogers. A lot of people know Keith Rogers in the Tallahassee mm -hmm. community. I think he's one of the most um, undiscovered hidden gems in the world. Uh, he has had a positive influence on a lot of individuals' life. One, he started an organization called Black on Black Rhyme, yes. 22 years strong. Um, people, you know, live, breathe Black on Black Rhyme. So that's one individual. Um, if you be around Keith, you understand what I mean. You know what I mean when I say He's a positive male influence to be around in a, a community leader, a community servant. Um, so one individual, um, my boss, Dr. David Jackson. I work at I work at Family for the, in the School of Graduate Studies and Research. And my boss is David Jackson, um, and he's from Atlanta. Uh, and I never thought that I could be a, a, a PhD candidate uh, until I was uh, under the matriculation under the tutelage of Dr. David Jackson, and as I got my bachelor's degree, I, in my mind, I had made it. I was the first person in my family to go to college, and I finally got my degree. Mm -hmm. And he offered me this opportunity to get my master's degree. And at the time, I did. I thought that I was not smart enough to get a master's degree. And then once I did, I was like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Then after the master's degree, he said, now, when are you going to get your PhD? And I was like, hold up, hold up. I got the master's degree now. I don't, you know, but... um. 
here I am. Here I am in a PhD program. And, you know, I think he's one of those people that taught me that just the difference between the person at the top of the mountain and at the bottom of the mountain is that the pop person at the top of the mountain decided to climb. Mm -hmm. um, so Keith Rogers, David Jackson, um, Larry Thompson. Uh, I got I got to give a big shout out to Larry Thompson. Uh, he, he started an organization called 50 Large to positively impact the lives of young young men uh, in the inner city. Uh, who else? All my professors. Fam, you have a, a multitude of professors that are positive role models, of mm -hmm. all of them doctors. All these black men that that came from one level and they elevated to another level in their life in their lives, and I look up to them and I'm so grateful to have these individuals in my life. Um, Doctor Denard is a very staple. He's a staple in Tallahassee. Uh, mm -hmm. If you know Doctor Denard, then you know what I mean. He's yeah. a family man. He's a business owner, and he he teaches what it means to be what it means to be a mentally, spiritually, and physically uh, gifted man. In a time in this time of racism and oppression Absolutely. that we're fighting through. Absolutely. So, so Johnny commented A five, I think that was for uh, Dr. Jackson. And then Jessica said, I knew you were going to say Keith. I actually thought that's who you were going to say first. So you already know Jessica. And then Tyrone said, I'm presently reading my grandmother's hand. Excellent read, understanding systemic racism. All right, that's a good one. So we'll have to definitely check that out, Tyrone. My grandmother's hand. Cool. All right. So, you know, when you think about positive um, men to follow, you know, I think about some of these motivational speakers out here, your, um, you know, T.D. Jakes or Les Brown or, uh, you know. Some Miles Monroe. Miles yes. Monroe. Yes. So, uh, you know, there are a number that, that kind of come to mind as, as I think about that. But, you know, are there any, and, and I know you mentioned a few local, um, you know, I think maybe some of the young people, while maybe the relationships might not be so formal, um, but there, there are people in our community that we possibly can identify, our coaches maybe, or... Um, clergy or you know just somebody in the neighborhood that you know, a neighbor even um or you know again just somebody in the neighborhood that is um you know dependable accountable that is you know nurturing and, and, and means you good it's not you know looking to cause you harm or, or inflict any any you know injury or demise to you so I, I think that, you know, a, a lot of times maybe those uh, positive people to follow kind of maybe fall, again, they're, they're less formal, um, but they still make an impact. They still make an impact. All right. Um, so we got Elliot Clayton on. He says, semantics, father is a title, daddy is a lifestyle. Men I like that one. In, in our boat. Okay. Thank you, Elliot. All right. Um, somebody is asking about the book. Tyrone, uh, Lori wants to know who's the author of that book. Uh, what was it? My Grandmother's Hand. So if you will put that in the comments. All right. So any other positive men to follow that you would recommend? And oh, how you seek them out? I mean, I know you say YouTube is your friend, but you know, I'm sure that there are authors some authors out there that have written books. That, um, I left off some people. Um, I left off something that's a, a very important to me. So for the past four years, um, mm -hmm. we started a mastermind group four years ago, mm -hmm. and we got the concept from the book, Napoleon Hill, uh, Think okay. and Grow Rich. Mm -hmm. And he speaks on the, the power of having a mastermind group. And it's part mm -hmm. of this, the African proverb, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So, um, Every Sunday at eight o'clock, um, I meet up with my brothers, mastermind, my mastermind brothers, uh, Antoine, Dominique, Jacob, um, myself, and Enrique. Okay. And we've been meeting for the past three years, and everybody in the group has elevated. Everybody in the group has elevated, and mm. it's a different. You know, I think uh, men. You know, my TD Jake, he spoke on this, but 
you know, men, we need we need men to help navigate us through this thing called life. You know, you know, a, a lot of times young girls to have women in their lives mm-hmm. they can seek advice from. It's hard to find that with with with, with men. I don't know if it's the ego issues or the alpha maleness that, that that comes that keeps us not together. But every Sunday we speak on what it is to build kings and develop kingship within ourselves and how to be godly men. I and love we hold, it. And we hold each other accountable for our goals. So we speak of our goals, our wins, our losses, our highs, our lows. And mm-hmm. we hold each other accountable. And um, Brian, he's the Brian. He's also, he was a member of the Mastermind Group. But he um, he took the courage to quit his job and start his photography business full-time. And I was a full-time photographer. But he's transitioned into a lifestyle as a firefighter now. Wow. Antoine, Antoine started a company called Spendify. It's a black directory for black-owned businesses across the world. They made oh, I saw it. And, and CNN, and uh, it's just amazing. I, I'm, it's an honor to know the brothers that are in my mastermind group. Um, Dominique started the Act House here in Tallahassee. Uh, it's an amazing individual who are building entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Enrique is a designer for United Way um, and Love Beyond Walls. I don't know if y'all seen the gentleman who got the um, hand washing hand washing stations across the world now um so in response to COVID, uh love beyond walls they started building these hand washing stations mm-hmm. and enrique does the design work for for love beyond walls wow. jacob is a 24 year old beast he's a boy a boy genius um okay. and it's just amazing to have these kind of individuals and we need people that in our lives that, that that hold us accountable um to morally hold us accountable spiritually hold us accountable financially hold us accountable mm-hmm. um we get together. We speak on life insurance. We we get we speak on stocks and bonds that we're investing in, savings accounts. We all got a goal to save up a year's worth of savings because that is what kings do. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's just a great environment. To just uh, we, we bounce. You know, one four brain, five brains is better than one brain, and that's mm-hmm. how we do our mastermind group. So I encourage everybody to get them on on the short end, get them an accountability partner. On the long end, get them a mastermind group. Of people who consistently provide advice, persistently uh, provide uh, spiritual upliftment. You know, when one of us are down, I call somebody in the mastermind group and they let us know that, you know, it's just a storm that we're going through. And sometimes we go through storms, but they they, they show us how to navigate the, the, the storms of life. If, we, if we're able to battle these storms um, effectively and efficiently. So I absolutely love that. I've heard you talk about the mastermind group um, when you left. Tallahassee and went to Atlanta. Um, I think that's an absolutely fantastic idea. I, I'm, I'm curious about whether or not you feel like that's something that can be replicated in terms of some type of um, outline on how to conduct these mastermind groups. I mean, maybe you all are doing it kind of organically, but I think you know they they need to be replicated for for men and women. Um, I've been trying to uh, get an accountability partner for quite some time now, but, you know, I think sometimes people have a problem with giving you truth and love, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I get it, but it's necessary. Like you said, all of you all have gone to the next level. So, you know, I think that, that that speaks to the value and the importance of, you know, these types of groups. So we have a lot of comments as it relates to what you just said. So let me, um, let me try to address some of these. So Jessica said, amen, accountability partners are a must. I need some. We got Brother Salam on here. He said, you all gave me a good question for discussion to ask on my page tomorrow. Well, so long. Yes. Good to see you, Salam. Thank you for being on here tonight. Welcome to Man Up Monday. All right. Johnny wants to know, how did you get the mastermind group started? Um, So if you get a book called, one, email me at uh, hello at lilark.com. Hello at L-I-L-A-R-C.com. I will be more than happy to send you an outline. Um, so it started out in this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And now people have, uh, they devised mastermind group, um, mastermind group works, workbooks that we've utilized. Uh, we went through the entire uh, life, like, um, 
<laughs> life was like movie studio. We went through the entire Think and Grow Rich, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Think and Grow Rich book, all thirteen chapters. Mm-hmm. And every week we would discuss chapter one, and chapter two, and chapter three. And now um, I can give you our outline. We go, so we spend. Uh, it's a timer on. Everybody get eight minutes to go there. To go over their highs, their lows, and an area of uh, weakness that they want to improve on. And then um, every week we rotate it. We have a hot seat. So somebody they get twenty minutes on the hot seat. They get to discuss um, a pressing issue, one specific pressing issue, mm-hmm. and everybody in the mastermind group got to come together and come up with solutions, and um, you know, and to solutions to help solve this pressing problem that that, that the hot seat member has. I I'm telling you again from the first time you told me about this mastermind group, I was blown away. Um, and was wishing and hoping that something like this would come along. So Lori said for me to remember, she's developing a group to have various um, groups of mass, a program to have various groups of masterminds. And she said she put it off due to COVID, but she guess she needs to bring it back. Confirmation. Um, we be virtually, so yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's crack it back up. Uh, Jessica said, "Miss Nicole, your accountability partner has to be accountable." LOL. And agree. Thank mm-hmm. you. Uh, but I think again, Derek, the things that you have mentioned in terms of some of the activities that you all participate in are so valuable and so needed. You know, sometimes maybe with family members, where we might tell certain things, but sometimes they judge us. Sometimes they don't believe in us sometimes you know it just don't work out having them to be your accountability partner you know i feel like this person should be someone that's not going to just be a yes person but somebody that will encourage you but also again as i say and and, you know that i'm all about is truth and love I, i want the truth give it to me lovingly you know you know don't growl me don't belittle me but you know give me the truth and love it's so it's so ah, man I, I i'm blessed and fortunate and highly favored that the group that this group has come together because too many times um i've tried to start organizations like this before and you know people weren't committed or people don't people don't want to be blunt you know they're like you said a yes they're yes people and you can't be a yes person in a mastermind group you got to lay out the pros and the cons and give your honest valid opinion because you know our motto we're building kings we're building kings mm-hmm. and as kings we have to hold each other accountable we praise our wins but mm-hmm. also when we're on the wrong track hey you know it's up to us to redirect that person um Absolutely. it is so crazy how you know if somebody misses a meeting so for instance if somebody misses a meeting um and it's a no call no show you know we have a we have a system, a, a, a penalty in place. It's a five dollar fee that you have to pay everybody in the group, and it's only twenty dollars. But it's to understand that you know we have morals that we've agreed upon and that we've established ourselves, and we have to keep our commitment to our commitments. Yeah. And I mean, say that again. Wait, say say that again for the people in the back who didn't hear it. So um, one of the things is keeping your commitment to your commitments. Um, mm. A lot of times people set goals, and you know. They become sidetracked. You know, something happens and they're no longer worried about the commitments. But you, one, you have to hold yourself personally responsible for committing, your, keeping your commitments, your commitments, and that allows when you form a mastermind group, when you have an accountability partner, it's easier for them to hold you accountable to your commitments because you know when they call you out, it's not belittling you. It's you said you were going to do this. These were your goals. These are the goals that you set out. We have a mastermind retreat. Um, we do our mastermind retreats in December, mm-hmm. so. First one was in Atlanta. Uh, then we, you know, now we rotate back and forth between Tallahassee and Atlanta. Um, so this past week was this past year was in Atlanta. We met in December. It was a two day uh, two day retreat where we go over our yearly goals. We break them down into monthly objectives. We break mm-hmm. them down into weekly to do list, and we break them down into daily tasks. Wow. So we know what we already know what we're gonna do, you know. And then um, every quarter, three every three months, we check in and check on the progress of our of our, uh, our mastermind group, um, Antoine, he's he's bought his third property, and this was a goal that he established in December to buy his first one. Now he's on his third one. Wow. It's just amazing to see. You know, uh, there's a quote: "If a person don't know where they're going in life, any road will take you there." Mm-hmm. And it's so beautiful to just set in the goal. You know, all you gotta do is set the goal and take mm-hmm. meaningful steps towards the goal. And you know, yes, intentional, intentional. So Lori said that consistency is key in mastermind. 
And then Johnny wants to know how long has your group been in place? Uh, we started this group October uh, 2016. We met in October. That was our first meeting. We met in Atlanta, um, and we've had we've had two member turnovers. So uh, we originally started with five people. Two of the people uh, we they kind of left and, and invited two more people on. So the current group that we have now has been in place for three years. Okay. So we started out with a certain group. A year in, it turned over, but the group that we have now has been in place for three years. So a total of five, uh, four years as of 2020. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So anything else you want to mention as it relates to um, seeking positive men to follow or, you know, difference between father and daddy as we prepare to uh, bring our discussion to a close? Ooh. Oh man, so um, I just want to shout out some uh, people that I, I listen to religiously. So mm -hmm. people that I put in my repertoire, um, T.D. Jakes. I'm a big fan of T.D. Jakes and his work and what he does. I'm a big fan of Miles Monroe. Uh, he's you know he's passed away, but we can learn from these people being uh, from the grave. He's left his videos, his books out. Uh, Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rome, Eric mm -hmm. Thomas. If you're looking for positive males to follow, they all they're all out there. Um, pick up their books, study their YouTube videos, listen to their podcast, um, and you know it kind of redirects you to put you on a different trajectory when you make them a part of your life. Like I get into my car, um, the people you know they get into my car, they're like, you don't have no music to listen to, and I, you know I'm so committed to my commitments. I listen to motivational speeches all the time. I'm always listening to some uh, how to become a better man or how to how to be a, a, God, a God man of God, how to be a better father. I'm always listening to these things. Um, and you gotta, mm -hmm. like, you gotta be committed to growth. You gotta be committed to prosperity. And I know I have to be, I'm not where I wanna be at in life yet. So I have to be very intentional about traveling the path that will get me to where I wanna get to in life. So. Yes, that word intentional is all that I hear when I hear you talking, very, very intentional. All right, Lori said Bill Winston is amazing. Lori's been dropping some jewels. She's been dropping some knowledge in here. So. Yes, yes, yes. Lori is a dynamic sister here in Tallahassee, and she is very uh, motivational. And you know, she she has a wealth of knowledge and um, and access to to resources. So I appreciate her greatly. So as we prepare to wrap up i want you to definitely again just give uh tell us where folks can find you where they can find this book and um you know how they can connect with you so uh I, i'm available uh life is like a rubik's cube on all platforms life is like a rubik's cube um, if you want any information about anything from tonight's discussion, first of all, Nicole, thank you for having me. Um, but email me at uh, hello at lilark.com. Hello at L-I-L-A-R-C dot com. I, I actually put that in the comments so y'all can see um, the email address. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and uh, I, I live in Tallahassee. It's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to serve in Tallahassee. Uh, before we got before uh, before we went live, Nicole and I was speaking about how Tallahassee is fertile soil. Um, you come to Tallahassee to grow, to learn, to de develop. There's a lot of doers. There's a lot of shakers. There's a lot of movers in Tallahassee, um, and you know it's just a beautiful, beautiful blessing to be amongst the movers and the shakers and the doers in Tallahassee at this moment in time that we are in. So uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Johnny wants to know, are you a motivational speaker? Mr. Johnny, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I started speaking. Um, I started speaking. I started out speaking as, as a poet at first. And then uh, I wanted to make a bigger impact on my students when I when I transitioned into the classroom. And now that I'm no longer in the classroom, um, I devised a curriculum around life is like a Rubik's Cube. Uh, we're available for workshops. We're available for speeches. Um, I'm actually I'm doing Zoom, uh, Zoom workshops with the FAMU TRIO program currently. Uh, that was a blessing. Uh, the FAMU hired me to conduct those uh, Life is Like a Ruby Q workshops where we show people how to solve the twists and turns of life That's by awesome. solving the twists and turns of the Rubik's Cube. 
That's awesome, Derek. That's awesome. All right, Rachel is giving you a plug. She said, great read. Great She's an amazing support system. Amazing support system. Yes, yeah. ma'am. All right. Uh, Lori said, nice to meet you, Derek. Likewise. Likewise. Yes. Uh, hopefully you all can meet in person one day soon. All right. Well, um, before we wrap up, I definitely want to thank you, Derek, for being my guest. I appreciate it. Hopefully this won't be the last time that you are on uh, CWN. I was so excited when I got the call. Listen, <laughs> I was so excited. I was nervous before we got on. I, I, I felt like this was my TED talk. So oh uh, I'm happy for me. Uh, I look forward to uh, being the guest on CWN again. Um, like I said, I'm so amazed at the level of commitment that you have to conversations with Nicole and how you're able to do what you do. Like you have 48 hours in your day. I don't know how you're able to find the time to do what you do, but it's, it's amazing. Enough. Look, it's not enough hours in a day, but it's all right. We we squeeze all of the minutes and seconds we can out of them. Yes. So um, for those of you who have not subscribed to the Conversations with Nicole YouTube channel, I invite you to do so. Uh, subscribing and supporting, and we need all the support we can get. Tomorrow, I have two shows, one at 6 o'clock, Let's Talk Voting, that um, Alicia Edwards is the facilitator I will be moderating. We have Greg James on, um, Mark Early, and oh, goodness, I can't remember the last lady's name, but they're going to, she's from the, um, women, the League of Women Voters, so we will be talking about voting. Um, especially here in Tallahassee. And then at 8.30 p.m., I have Single in the City with Joe Peacherhorn and Nick Rains. And we actually have a pastor that will be on that will be talking about dating from a biblical perspective. So it should be quite interesting. And then on Wednesday, uh, for what we want on Wednesday at 10 p.m., Dr. Tiffany Packer will be my She's guest. Amazing. Yes, yes, yes. I just uh, kind of got wind of Tiffany last week, and I am super impressed with what she has going on. She um, also teaches at FAMU, but um, we are going to be talking about the women's role in the era of New Age civil rights and historical women who continue to influence our approach to activism. So it should be action-packed. So, um, oh my goodness, you should see some of the. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna read these comments there. So, Johnny said, enjoyed it. Lori said, thank you, Nicole. You're amazing. Thank you, Lori. So, are you? Um, Jessica said, Derek brought the Black on Black Rhyme crew out tonight. Yes, listen, Jessica, I was tagging the Black on Black Rhyme crew to, to come support the brother tonight. Yes, because we, we family. And now look at here. We got a request. Derek is not going to do a poem. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! Look, it's not Tuesday, but you got something you want to share with the people, Derek? I, I could do a poem. I could do a poem. Okay, all right. Let's hear you. The okay, guy. so um, this you know the time, the era that we're in. Uh, I do, I do a piece. Um, it's a racism piece, so I might ruffle some feathers tonight. Right. The number one rule of slavery was to make white folks money. Are we overlooking the fact that that system is still going? They could care less about the fate of the black race because they set us free and they still getting paid. So let's get one thing straight. If you got a job, you a slave and you ain't being bought no more, you getting paid, and if he can afford to pay you and your coworkers, how much you think he make? And who make the laws that we break? Who dictates whether or not we can or we take? We lie to ourselves if we say we ain't slaves. Like why black folk desire all the white owned brand names? And why Michael Jordan don't own Jays? And why Michael Jordan sell out the race? And how the Statue of Liberty don't be the patron of saint? She's a Statue of Liberty. She's supposed to have a black face. But to be honest, we have no idea how slavery destroyed our race. We don't have a language, nor religion, nor an economic system. And too many black men getting locked up in prison and white folks get damn near all our spending. Wow. 
why? Because we don't support black businesses to prevent it. And all the top black talent go to white schools for their picking. It's a part of their system. We are living in white supremacy racism. And I know y'all don't want to hear this, but a huge part of our oppression is religion. Like how Jesus was born in Africa, but don't look like us. And while black folks still get on and go straight to the back of the bus, slavery made them trillions. You think they're going to make that job right? Turn slavery into capitalism overnight and didn't think twice. It's built mm -hmm. around this concept of you want and what you can't have. So we'll work twice as hard and then only get half. And then we think slavery is over because we had a black president. And then black folks quick to say that I'm racist. Black folks, we can't be racist. That's not the way they made it. We need to open our eyes to what racism is. And we need to really realize what slavery did. And many proud ones said they wasn't going to be branded. Many jumped overboard and died right there in the Atlantic. And we are the descendants of an enslaved people. Stolen from Africa. Worked 500 years. Set free. And now we're proud to be from America. And don't nobody see nothing wrong with that. We comfortable over here. Ain't got no plans of going back. So we bragging about what we got. Where they benefiting off what we lack like unity, a uh, functional black community, or how poor immigrants set up shop in our neighborhoods and make money off us usually. Don't believe me? Who own the liquor stores or the gas stations that we fill up on? Or who providing us all with these name brand clothes? And what's crazy is our boss gives us our checks and we run to the malls to get more. You know, we always talking about wait till we get some dough and sell ourselves pipe dreams of the property we gonna own, but overlooking the fact that we slaves until we well past old. Ain't no slave codes. We no longer being bought or sold. They took the chains off our bodies, but on our minds got a strong hold with no plans of letting go. And what's crazy is a lot of us don't believe, but it's cool though, because I got some Dr. Francis Chris Wilson in me, and I'm gonna keep fighting for my people until my people are free. Thank y'all for listening, good people. Y'all be great like the lakes. Y'all be blessed like the sneeze. Love it, love it, love it. All right, good people. We out of here. Thank you again, Derek. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. All right. Peace.